Levitsky. Levitsky. We're just about to start here. I hope the volume is at its proper level. We're going to have a super game. As you probably remember, these teams have met twice in the past, in the Nationals and in the Day of Stars handball tournament. They both made the finals. In each case, Benji and Louie won the first game. We're winning the second game, and then much to everyone's surprise, Eddie Frangioni and Richie Spataro came back to win. Even though Benji and Louie are the sentimental favorites, the smart money is on Frangioni and Spataro. But anything can happen here. We seem to have a problem. Frangioni moved his foot. It was a block ball. Morris it didn't call it. This is unbelievable, folks. So the committee has met. The committee has decided. And the committee came up with a block ball. So there's no fault. Score. 0-0. Zero, zero. Frangioni's Pitaro won the score. Pitaro, that's what he's noted for. He goes for the shot, usually makes it. Eddie is the playmaker. He moves the ball around. Just watch Eddie's move. He does just what's legal. Always keeps Benji and Louie off balance. Benji and Louie gain the serve. We're going to see a lot of heavy hitting here. 
This is the forward part of the game where both teams tend to feel each other out. Benji Louie, however, keep blasting the center. They just keep blasting the center. That's all they're capable of doing, and that's really all they should do. They should be patient, keep the ball in play. They may be able to tie a frangione. But if Louie decides to go for shots, that's where they get into trouble. Frangione is the playmaker. goes for the shot on the strong end of play is which is the town. Here joining me in the booth is our four-time indoor national champion, Joe Dursley. I only hope that he doesn't add his comment. Louis makes a terrific right-hand kill shot, pushes it right down. It was a poor percentage shot, but he got away with it. A lot of this game is going to figure on guys being overwhelmed by a particular play and coming out with a good shot. It'll be a reaction rather than a play making shot. Frangione's going to keep trying to stay in front of Louis. See that? Louis's always behind Frangione. You can't power the ball when you want secret is, Louis shouldn't panic and go for a crazy shot. This probably should go on and on. See? No block. You haven't seen anything yet because Frangione is going to start setting the pace. Spataro is the power man, Benji's the power man, Louis's the power man. Frangione is the brain man. Just watch him how he manipulates the ball. What's up, Bill? Look in the back of the camera, see if the R is on. You know what I'm talking about? There's, there's two red lights on. Two, two right. Yeah. Don't block the paint. You're blocking the uh, lens. What you're seeing now is Derso's derriere. Tremendous move cross court by Frangione. What did that do? Okay, our maintenance man has just come into this very closed-end booth. Thurso's banana peel is right alongside, so he's adding a little something to the scenery. And I think I just made him leave. Of course not. I want you coming. It would be a good idea to get a score right now. Louis asks for it. Score, 4-1. Unbelievable. There's going to be a lot of close plays here and a lot of blocking, but the referee has got to be quick and alert when to know not to call a block. Benji is in heaven. We'll see what happens about 10 or 12 points from now when the pressure gets stuck. That's it. Louis should not have gone for that second kill, even though the ball was out. In a regular play, that would have been a very poor choice of shots. His job is to keep pounding, trying to tie a Frangione out. Then when they tie a Frangione out, then he can drop shots in his corner, but not before that. Frangione and Spataro are too alert at this moment. Score 5-1. Again, this is troublesome for Louis and Benji. Every time they're ahead, they think the game is over. 
We have our first time out. So far, we still have a feeling out process. Louis is starting to talk to Benji. Whether or not that's going to be good for Louis and Benji, I don't know. The thing that's missing right here is Rangione usually gets on Spitaro's back and really peps him up, gets the best out of him. If they were to fall behind 10-1 or so, you're going to see Frangioni start giving Richie Spitaro a lot of encouragement in quotes. He'll call him everything under the sun. Joe, who do you like this game, by the way? Well, despite the score, I have to go with Big Eddie. And, uh, it is a 21-point game, right? Yeah. It's going to go two out of three? They beat him in the last two tournaments. Do you think it'll go two out of three, Joe? Well, uh, not, not from what I see. Yeah, Louis is already angry at Benji. Benji is already uh, worried about Louis losing his calm and everything. They, in other words, they're winning the game now, and yet Louis is very upset. Yeah, so, history has shown that once they're ahead, yeah. they think it's over, they fall behind. If Louis is going to be upset when he's winning, what's going to happen when he's losing? Okay. Do you think the size of the bet, they, you know, they usually bet $5 at a clip. Now it's up to big numbers. Do you think that's going to have any effect on Louis? Big Eddie and Richie are going to play as if they had nothing on the game. That's right. It means the money's irrelevant to them. But what's the effect and on Louis? life or death to, Rich, to, to Louis meant life or death. Okay. This is a little too much pressure for Louis, especially. Yeah, I think Benji bet more than his usual 5-2. Okay, we're back to the play. You want to play now? Did she hit that one out? Yeah. He shot by Frangioni. He's right on the bottom of the ball. Sometimes you think, why didn't he miss rather than make it? He's got that kind of skill. He's got terrific hands. Look at how they come. Two bounces in my judgment. They keep playing. That's the short line man's call, who happens to be a Coney Island. Benji made a crucial error there. He should not have gone for the shot. Benji's job is to keep pumping the ball, keep it in play. Louis's job at this point in the game is also to keep the ball in play. If they could keep pounding at Frangioni, he ultimately must get tired. He can only return that ball so many times. But Benji and Louis don't know that. Apparently. Benji and Louis whispering a few words of encouragement to each other. Frangioni unhappy with a two-bounce pickup. It's already the second little argument here in the game. It was minor, but it may lead to something else. I see my beautiful daughter Erica watching the game. It's not only Valentine's Day today, but it's her birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Erica. <laughs> Okay, Joe has rejoined us in the booth. <laughs> Why? I don't know. This How man is so annoying. <laughs> Wait a second. I thought Gifford was the good-looking one. <laughs> I guess Joe's got the two. You don't have to worry about the game, Joe. This is a professional recording here. And we're going to edit you out later, you know what I mean? So behave yourself. See that move by Frangioni as he hit the ball? See that move by Frangioni? Just watch him closely. Watch his choice of shots. Just watch his choice of shots. More important, though, is the way he moves with the ball. Remember what I said before? If they keep the volleys going longer and lower, longer, Frangioni must tie it. So if Benji and Louis are patient, keep the ball in play, they'll be able to tie a Frangioni. Look at that choice of shots. He always hits it to the right place. It's almost instinctive. Similar to Joe Durso and Rubio, but they seem to have that ability, knowing where the ball goes. Of course, with Durso, usually can't make them, but at least he knows where it goes. 
why is he going for my throat? <laughs> Joe is so nervous now, he's squeezing his banana peel, the poor devil. We're doing the game. We'll find out in sports uh, broadcasting, folks. Not to comment on what's going on, you can see that yourself, but only to sort of summarize every few points as to what's happening. Joe doesn't know that, that's why he's leaving. Okay, we're back to the game. Remember those two minor incidents I spoke about before? One was the first point of the game where there was a block call. The second one was a two-bounce pickup which wasn't called right away. You just watch and see whether or not that doesn't set the scene for a bigger argument later. These guys are thinking about it. That's an avoidable, avoidable handle. It was clearly an avoidable hinder. Frangioni went into the path of the ball, and it should have been avoidable. That's a matter of opinion, unfortunately. You look at the camera and see if you can see it yourself. He clearly moved into the path of the ball. Keep watching for that, because you're going to see a lot of it. Look at those moves by Frangioni. It was an excellent play. He had Louis completely blocked out. Watch Spataro. He keeps moving the ball, keeps hitting it hard. Benji so far is doing a fairly good job. So long as he doesn't try and end the play with his left hand down low. Louis should continue to pound the ball to tie a Frangione. As a matter of fact, Louis hasn't had the opportunity to go for many kill shots anyway, which is really an advantage. See how he blocks him out? That's it. Benji's job is to bring everything back. Look at those hands by Frangione. See that pick? Frangione stands still. Spataro drops it in front of him. Unbelievable. Look at those moves. <laughs> That's why he's called the court general. Spataro puts in a fluttering kill shot into the right corner. But remember, it was Frangione who set up the whole thing. He directed everything. Will that make, make Benji and Louie a little nervous? Score, 5-7. Unbelievable the way that he has a computerized brain. He has a computerized brain, Frangione. Look at those moves. Sometimes Frangione tries to ham it up a little bit. Benji and Louie keep pounding that ball and Frangione gets tired. They're going to be able to do a number on him. Timeout. It's a 21-point game, best two out of three. I see Big Mike down below here, growing a goatee and mustache, and Slick is next to him, looking like he's trying to mind his own business, but I know exactly what he has in mind. You hear any cans crushing around the park here? Give me a dozen slick stiffs, give me a dozen stiff slicks. No matter how you say it, you know what you're ordering. They call him a stiff. They have a fairly quiet crowd here today. That's about 75 people enjoying this match. Benji in yellow. Louis playing it properly. You notice he's keeping the ball in play. He's not going crazy. And now he comes up with a beautiful rollout kill. He didn't go for it. He was just trying to pound it low, and it went in for the kill with his right hand. The 
other thing that's going to favor Benji and Louie is that it, it's a 21-point game. They're in better condition. So if they keep pounding Frangioni, they got to shoot. Hinder. Again, he only called it a block. The man in the back should not be there. Frangioni purposely appeared to took away Louis' shot. Keep watching for that. Frangioni moves only at the very last minute, giving Louis as little to look at as possible. Taro, very steady, keeps everything in play. Everybody's keeping the ball basically the same level. Usually around this time, if, if Benji and Louis slow up a little, Frangioni will try a few lift shots to get a more balance. Louis overswung and he paid the price. Benji wisely lets the ball go and it goes out to the side. Score. 10 playing 6. Benji, Louis over swings again. He's got the right idea to keep the ball in play and just keep pounding it. He's got to keep it low enough so it doesn't fly over the long line. Louis reacting. That's a double take, and the next thing you see is a shot in Scatero's corner. Score, 16. Okay. It looks like the fatigue is taking its toll. Notice Frangioni hasn't started yelling at Spataro yet. That's usually the ingredient that makes Spataro play great. I guess in Spataro, Spataro's mind, he's wondering why Frangioni hasn't yelled at him. I think Frangioni still thinks he's in control of his game and he doesn't think it's necessary. But if they fall farther behind, you're going to start hearing the verbal fireworks. Spataro with a rollout. There's a footfall. Looks like Frangioni's tiring a little bit. But he still has the knowledge of the game. He still has the ball control. Go in gets tough. He gets tough. Frangioni hasn't started yelling at him yet. He doesn't have to. He still thinks he's in control. Score 6-11. Not to me. Louis hit the ball so hard and was standing still as the ball passed him. If you have a chance to play this scene back on that last play, you'll see Louis was entitled to the shot. The ball moved very fast. He was standing still as the ball passed him, and it looked like Frangioni just miscued. The position of Frangioni behind Louis was in a line with the ball. So I think he missed only because the ball was fast, not because he was blocked out. But these are things you have to watch for. It's a matter of interpretation. Benji and Louie are also quiet because they happen to be in the lead. Just 
See? The reason Louis missed that shot was Frangie only took a little half step in Louis's direction. And it was just enough to take Louis's eye off the ball. had a lift shot. Did you see that shrug Benji just gave? That's a bad sign. Frangioni would have made that. They would have made a nice run, I think. He just missed it by a hair. There's the lift shot I told you about. Caught him completely by surprise. But he was able to get a block out of it. Benji, Benji should not have lowered that ball. Benji has to keep the ball knee high or higher just has to keep pounding the center. So outside calls, Pataro missed by a hit. Score, 11-9. You notice the gap has become closer. That's why Francione hasn't started yelling at his partner. Here's Pataro with a key play. Benji doing a little bit of uh, Paderewski work, claiming it was two downs. There you go. Frangioni feels he's in charge. That's why he hasn't sparked Richie Spataro. Score is now 9-11. Beautiful play by Louis. The key to this game is getting Frangioni tired. If they can keep overwhelming him with power, and it is a 21-point game, the partner's chances of winning will be increased. But they have to keep the ball in play. It was a beautiful play by Benji. He remembered not to lower the ball with his left, and he kept it in play. That was the key to that volley. Benji only still the quiet general here, giving the right directions to Spataro. Benji and Louis, a little tentative, I think. The next few points will tell the difference. And here's... should not direct his power at Frangioni. Frangioni's hands are too good. Got a long ball call. Louis should keep the ball more to the center, slightly away from Frangioni's left. He seems to try and power it right out. Frangioni gets in front of him the way he usually is. Don't lower it, Benji. 
Louie. Uh, Louie misses the key shot. He was supposed to blast that shot through the center. He always has a thing in mind that he's got to end the play. There's the Frangioni hand. Frangioni's going to start doing more and more lifting because Benji and Louie's power is slightly going down. When it goes down, he has control of the ball, Frangioni. You'll see a lot more lifting. Outside. Outside. Looked like Mitchell was blocked on the line there, and they got away with the... Uh... Well, that's my opinion. I'm up here. The fans, uh, I guess, seem to be agreeing with that. They're trying not to get down on the referees. Heaven knows they have enough problems. Carroll created the block. He got a short. Puts the ball up easy. There's the shot. Just a little bit away from Frangioni. Not at him, but a little bit away from him. Got to make him reach. Just make him reach by a hair. Once the volley goes three or four shots, once the score goes three or four shots, the volley, Louis thinks he's got to end the play. That's where he makes his mistake. Gotta be patient. Gotta be patient. Benji shrugs again. Watch out for the Benji shrug. Spataro doing a fine job. Frangioni not needing a ball that low, just missed by a hair. It would have put a lot of pressure. And guess what the score now is, folks? 11-14. This is when Frangioni smells blood. They were behind. He didn't have to yell at the tower. Now they're going to look better and better. Once they take that lead, they look better and better. Once Benji Louis fall behind, they don't look that good. They're going to upset them terribly now. Benji Louis must hold. Unbelievable. Benji Louis should call a timeout to stop this forward momentum. Right now, you're going to see Benji start yelling at Louie. Luckily, Spataro missed. It's only the second man, though. Frangioni wants to keep scoring. Frangioni never lets up till he gets that 21st point. Benji Louie doesn't make a move here. They're going to fall into a hole. Frangioni doing a little number on the referee. Carroll misses again. Frangioni still cool. Told Spataro to keep the ball on the wall. Gives Benji a little encouragement here. I don't think Benji heard it. Benji.
Frangioni always in front of Louis. If you played back that last volley, you'll see Frangioni running rapidly around Louis to take a front position. That sets it up for Spataro to drop it in that corner. It also sets it up for Louis not to see the ball. And it also sets it up for Frangioni to drop it in front of himself. Again, Louis didn't see the ball. It was close to Spataro's foot. Close enough where Louis' eye was taken off the ball. shot, but it was Frangione who set Louis up for the kill. Benji Louis aren't out of it yet. If they can tie a Frangione and hold him here, they got a shot. Thank you. 